Hi there, welcome back or welcome to my channel, depending on how long we have known one another. Today we are diving deep into the wonderful world of my weird little leafy friends. Buckle up, babe! Got a lot of these little freaks, all right? First up, actually, you know what? Back up a little bit. I'm gonna start with Croniana, cause K comes before L. I don't, I don't know why. I got, I've only got two of them. What's the difference between Croniana and Lacanosa? Because every time I ask somebody, they're like, oh, I don't know, I think it's in the sound about the, if you cut the, if you have a microscope in there, the differences between that and that. You don't know. So I looked it up. In 2022, a paper called Leaf Architectural Analysis of Taxonomically Ambiguous Hoya Lacanosa and Hoya Croniana was published. In which the conclusion was, given that the character set that shows distinction is the laminar characters, we are unable to establish the two species as distinctly different because leaf morphology is known to be variable in Hoyas. <laughs> Don't we know it? Isn't that why we love them? Isn't that why? Venation characters show no considerable difference between the patterns seen in Hoya lacunosa from the patterns observed in Hoya croniana. However, the venation data set in this study alone may not be sufficient to fully support the similarity. TLDR, we don't got no f clue, bro. We don't know. We don't know. So that's the whole, that's what, that's as far as I, I, I mean, I Googled it. If you, know any different than me, then I invite you to politely, politely state your case in the comments. Thank you. Let us start with Hoya Croniana, or at least a Hoya that I have acquired under the name Hoya Croniana. Usually when a Hoya has these very short heart-shaped leaves, people consider it a Hoya Croniana instead of a Hoya Lacunosa. But as we know, conditions change how leaves grow, how they're shaped, what they look like, etc. Uh, but this is pretty, I mean, this, this Hoya is not gonna change much. It has very heart-shaped leaves. So pretty and like multifaceted, you know what I mean? They're like, they're like, they're like, Ankaja. Right. Do you know what I mean? I love it. So cute. Anyway, I have a second Croniana and that is my Croniana, what is this called? Splash leaves. It's not called Silver Splash, it's not called the derogatory term for Inuits. <laughs> it's just Croniana splash leaves. As you can see, both of them have that very like short heart-shaped leaf. And oh man, this thing just grows like the Dickens. Grows faster than I could say photosynthesis. It also blooms profusely. Anyway, Hoya Croniana, beautiful classic. You got the silver splash, you got the, the prolific blooms, you got everything that you want in a Hoya, really. Any kind of Hoya. I'll just put you back down there. Just, you'll be my little buddy. Be my little buddy the whole way through. I have a lot of Hoyas to go through right now, and um, that reality is uh, hitting me quickly like a brick. <laughs> I've only done two. <sighs> when it comes to the actual Lacanosa, I thought that I would start with my old frenemy, the OG, the original uh, Lacanosa that I acquired back in 2018 when I first started, um, you know, discovering Hoyas and becoming absolutely hypnotized by them. Not much to see here. When I acquired this, I got it from a garden center in Paris, and it was a really big full plant. It was just this big pot with a bunch of cuttings of Lacanosa in it. Super full, really beautiful. Um, as you can see, <laughs> we've been through some tough times. We have been through a mite infestation and maybe a few other mite infestations and an aphid infestation. We've done root rot, we've done it all. Just keeps trying to leave me and I will not allow it to just have a lot of sentimental value attached to this particular plant. And we're gonna pull through, you and me, okay? Whether you like it or not, we're gonna pull through. I mean, I, I don't know what the origin of it is. I literally just bought it as Hoya Lacunosa at a very major garden center here in France called uh, Jardinerie Truffaut. I don't know where it's from, originally. Isn't it rude to ask that anyway, you know? Where are you really from, you know? I feel like it's rude. I feel like it's rude to ask that. 
I know the species, you know what I mean? Let's talk about uh, Hoya Lacanosa Black Queen. It's a, spoiler alert, <laughs> it's, it's not really black. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I was promised beautiful ebony leaves and they have apparently gone on temporary vacation. Apparently that's not out of the ordinary for this plant. I talked to Edita, who is the originator of this. She had found a seed pod on one of her silver lacanosas in her collection, so she doesn't know the father of this plant. And sometimes the leaves are black, and then they're not anymore. They're green. I will say um, it grows at the speed that paint dries. It is the slowest Lacanosa in my collection. She is in no hurry. She is in no rush. She is the queen, okay? The queen will not be hurried. If you want a really slow growing Hoya, she's your man, woman. She's your, that's, you should. I don't know what her pronouns are. I don't know what the pronouns are. Ooh, I know what's next. Um, leopard skin. Leopard skin is so cute. So look at how bouncy it is. Look how happy and like perky. It's a little party animal. Get it? Cause it's a le it's leopard leopard skin. Anyway, I really like the silver on this one. How it has like a kind of a streaky pattern compared to other Hoyas with splash. It's a great grower. Happy little Hoya. Very pleased to have this in my collection. Next, I have mint coin. You know, this is such a beautiful variation of silver lacanosa. Very, very pretty. It really is like a minty silver. Mine is looking a little crappy. Minty fresh, more like minty distressed. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's just, I, we had some issues. I overwatered it. It got a case of stink foot. So I had to kind of take it apart, treat the roots with hydrogen peroxide, scissors, and then I repotted it. It's doing better, but you can see that some of the leaves are like, wrinkly and sour about um, what I did to it. It's holding a grudge. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in recognizing root rot and treating it, I do have a video about that. It's one of my more popular videos. So uh, that could be helpful for you to avoid something like this. I guess I'm not the spokesperson right now, am I? How to avoid root rot. <laughs> it's gonna, it's, it, it, he's gonna pull it, pull it, he's gonna, through. He's gonna pull through. <laughs> I almost said pull out. <laughs> you know, I have Googled, I have looked, I have been on Facebook, I have searched, and I cannot figure out why this is called Mr. Tent. No clue, but I love this Hoya. I really love uh, Lacanosa with <laughs> all of them, but this one, this type, I mean, with the really elongated leaves that have like these dimples in them and a lot of texture. Oh, I just love it. Mr. Tent is so cute. For a little while there, I thought that Mr. Tent might be the same as, I'll show it later, EPC329. But after keeping both of them for a little while, I don't, I don't think that they are the same Lacanosa. We're just, <laughs> gotta catch them all. <laughs> I'm crazy. He's a tent out of tent. Okay, it took me a while to get around to that. Um, really bad joke. I will show you Royal Flush. I used to have a large, you're gonna see this a lot actually, cause last summer I put a bunch of my Hoyas out on the patio and my patio gets <laughs> full sun when it is sunny, which is like kind of rare in my climate. It, it rains a lot. It's been a rough winter, man. <laughs> it's been rough. But I left everything out on the patio and then maybe like a week and I forgot to water them and everything cooked and we had a heat wave. So I did end up chopping and propping a lot of my Lacanosa simply because they looked like garbage. Why would I want a bunch of plants that look like garbage? Obviously. So you'll see, like I have a bunch of little ones that used to be bigger plants. I sold what cuttings I could, like any healthy leaves, and then I just restarted them. So uh, Royal Flush. Oh, you know what, you know what else? <laughs> Is that I treated all of my plants with paraffin oil. Horticultural oil, paraffin oil is like a dormant oil. I read that it can be effective against broad mites. So I went ahead and bought some paraffin oil, treated all of my Hoyas, and then like six or seven of my Hoya Lacanosa defoliated. They took all their clothes off. I just couldn't resist. So I had to then 
refined and repurchase or exchange for replacements of my oil lacunosas that I lost because of the paraffin oil. A little too heavy on the paraffin oil that time. If it's of any interest to you, I changed to canola oil. It's a typical treatment that you'll find at any garden center, a bottle of canola oil mixed with pyrethrins. And I heard, and on the bottle, it says that it's effective against broad mites. Um, so I decided to just treat my entire collection with that. And nothing has responded poorly to that. Everything is fine. Nobody's taking off their clothes, but it's still supposed to be effective against broad mites. It's supposed to, I can't speak to that yet. I do have a couple of plants in my collection on which there are broad mites, so I'm keeping them. Like I've been keeping them aside because I'm trying to find the cure. Like I'm trying to figure out what is it that's going to finally wipe these out. So I'm treating those plants with it and waiting to see over time if the broad mites come back. I'm sorry, really long rant, but this is what I do. That's what I do, that's who I am, okay? Royal flush. So I did lose royal flush so now it's just a teeny tiny itty bitty little baby. Gorgeous though, right? Ugh. Mine is a really nice rich, like a deep green color and it sun stresses really easily, especially on the Hoya pegboard. I made a video sometime back about, um, I created, the, I'll show footage of it. Roll footage. I have this sort of installation in my living room made of these Ikea pegboards and then it's lit by Soltec Solutions Highland track lights. And those track lights, man, they are very powerful. And so a lot of these Hoyas, even though like there's a couple of them, I think it's um, Ruby Sue or something, I keep it at the bottom of the board so it's furthest from those lights, but it's still sun stresses. So those lights are like really powerful and they make all of my Hoyas grow fantastically. They bloom, they sun stress on this board, like, I could not be more satisfied with the Soltec Solutions situation. So quick plug, if you use the code BETSY15, you'll get 15% off of any purchase at Soltec Solutions. I I have some right behind me <laughs> on the Staghorn Ferns. I've had those since 2019. And these ones, they're in front of me on the pegboard. I've had those since, what year was that, 2022? I'm pretty sure it was 2022. That was a really long rant, okay. <laughs> Very similar to Royal Flush is Ruby Sue. This is one that I acquired pretty recently. I just love, I love how funky she is. The vines of Ruby Sue are very dark and the leaves, normally a dark green, but if you put them um, in enough light, they turn to like a really rich, like a ruby color, a purplish red ruby color. She's super funky. She's super cool. I like her vibe. You know what I mean? That's, what, that's all I have to say about Ruby Sue. My Ruby Sue. Uh, uh, uh. I'm not even halfway through this, am I? <laughs> I'm not even halfway through this. Next, I have some variegated Hoyas. I have Hoya Lacanosa Inner Variegated. Just a tiny baby. Not looking at a lot of foliage there. And this is Lacanosa Suma. Um, I, 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 so far, I don't really know the difference between these two. I have heard that Suma has shorter leaves, but right now they look pretty identical to me, so time will tell. You know what else I've got? You're gonna be amazed by this one. <laughs> I have the outer variegated Lacanosa. Um, yeah. So, um, Not a whole lot to say about that. And this is clone two, which is supposed to be the more dependable clone. <laughs> oh, okay, now we get to talk about Tove. Tove, really gorgeous, really pretty. This was given to me as a gift actually by um, Oksana from Hoya Fixation up in Finland. I did an exchange with her some months back and she saw, I don't, I must have said it on Instagram or somewhere. She like, or maybe I posted on Facebook that I was looking for this. And she knew. And she sent it to me as a gift, as an extra. So it was really sweet of her. I just love people in this community. The thing that I love so much about Hoyas is the funky, asymmetrical, 
wonky looking leaf shape. Every single leaf is individual and different and unique and that's what kind of makes it exciting when your Hoya starts growing because you just don't know what the next leaf is gonna look like. And you know, my name is Betsy Begonia, so obviously I appreciate leaf asymmetry. <sighs> okay, my cats are eating and that means they're gonna wanna go outside really soon and that I'm gonna have to turn off the camera for a minute. Where is she? 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 Oh my God, I have so many freaking Hoyas. Ah, okay. Here I have Lacunosa White Pearl. This was given to me as a Christmas present. Quite pertinent considering it looks all snowy and pretty. I would say the difference between White Pearl and other um, silver type Lacanosas that I've seen is that the silver is very shimmery, almost like a car paint or a nail polish. I'm so grateful to have received this as a gift. Adita, you sweetheart! The next one, I think is this one. Yeah. So, am I already getting into hybrids? Oh, I didn't mean to already get into hybrids. I meant to do hybrids at the end, but you know what? It's here and I'm here and we're doing it and here we go. Look how crappy this looks. It's a mess. It's a mess. I have to restart this. This is a Lacanosa hybrid. Apparently, I didn't realize that. I got this from Camilla in Sweden and normally it's very pretty with Lacanosa type leaves. They're pretty big leaves, but it's supposed to produce really big Lacanosa type flowers. It hasn't bloomed for me yet. The reason that it looks so ugly, aphids. I had an aphid problem. Because last summer when I put all the Hoyas on the patio, I got really busy at the end of the summer. Like I got a job at the end of the summer. And so like it was really at the last, it was like October and I was like, oh my God, I gotta bring the plants in. And I had to like put them everywhere. And I wasn't, I just, time flies, you know? And I didn't realize that some of them had aphids on them. So I stuffed a bunch of them into my grow tent and I didn't know that like aphids were just wreaking havoc on those plants. I had no idea how difficult they are to get rid of once they're in an indoor environment. When they're outside, they're pretty easy to get rid of. You just, you know, you hose down the plant, get rid of all of the live aphids, and then you can do a treatment, like an oil treatment or something. Um, I don't know, there's like a million aphid treatments that you can do, and they all work pretty well and aphids are easy to get rid of. But once they are inside, those things fly, okay? They got wings. <laughs> they will absolutely wreak havoc. My back itches, sorry. They will absolutely wreak havoc because you'll go to, you'll see them on one section of your plants, so you'll treat those plants, and then in the middle of the night, they just, they fly all over and they'll get all over. And you don't know that they're somewhere in your apartment laying eggs somewhere else, and it's just like a merry-go-round. <laughs> it's just like, I get just, I was for like two months just going in circles treating aphids and treating aphids and treating aphids. And finally I had to like take one entire weekend and just spend hours treating all of my Hoyas for aphids. I finally wiped them out. I thought it would never end. It was exasperating. So do not make the same mistake as me. Otherwise you'll get plants that look like this because vines rotted off because of the, uh, they secrete like a mildew or something and that causes mold. So it's not just the aphids sucking away at the juices of your plant, it's also that they, then your plant will develop mold and start to rot and it's, oh my God, it's a whole mess. I think that I will restart this Hoya um, cause I just can't stand how mangled and ugly it looks personally. Soon at hoyomygosh.com, Lacanosa hybrid with very large blooms. <laughs> Available this spring. Lacanosa 1039 from Boger. This is another one that I unfortunately lost due to the paraffin oil treatment that I used on my Hoyas. So again, <laughs> don't make the same mistake that I made. But no, this is, a, this is a nice, this Hoya kind of has both things going on with it where it's like, it's got those long, like elongated leaves and it has the dimples and stuff. So it's got all that texture, but it's also still kind of wonky looking at the same time. It's like the best of both worlds. I finally got my hands on Amarillo. I do not know how I feel about this plant. 
Hoya Laguna's Amarillo. Let me get this out of the way. Right? Like it, it looks like it's constantly suffering from chlorosis. You know what I mean? I really don't know how I feel about it. I, I'm undecided. It's just that like every time, oh, I'll be like, cause it's on the pegboard and I'll be up there on a stool watering my Hoyas and then I'll catch a glimpse of it and I'm like, ah! Because I think that one of my Hoyas is dying and that it has chlorosis. And then I realize that it's Amarillo. It's unique. It's unique. You tell me what you think about Amarillo. What do you say? You think it's pretty, unique? Uh, I don't know. The next one on my list. You know, it could easily be top five Lacanosa for me. It really could. Um, if I could just stop killing it. If I could stop killing this Hoya, I would be so grateful. I just keep overwatering it. It starts, it's, it starts to get really big and beautiful. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so proud of myself. We have made it, we have pulled through. And then the next day I take a look at it and it's all shriveled and wrinkled and it's definitely got root rot again. And I don't know, I don't know why. It's one of my favorites. So this is like such a small specimen of it. But this Hoya, it's got these wonky looking leaves. They are so silly looking. Like, what is this? What are we doing? Unpredictably funky. But it's got all these red splotches. How cool, how cool, how cool is this Hoya? You tell me, you tell me how cool is this Hoya? I love it. I'll do this all day. This is the whole video. This is the rest of the video. It's just me showing you this Hoya. It's got splash. It's got it all, baby. I wish it would live. Please stop dying. Please stop dying. Please stop. Please stop dying. Lacanosa big leaf. Where is my Lacanosa big leaf? Is it you? This is Lacanosa big leaf. It's got big leaves. Don't you know? Isn't that fascinating? Its leaves are just so big. It's okay. It's nice. You know, I was gonna say it reminds me of a sunrise, but it doesn't. It really does just look like big lacanosa leaves. I think it's great. It's a very fast growing Hoya. I got it from Camilla. I didn't ask her any questions because I don't ask a lot of questions when it comes to lacanosa. I'm just like, you got it? Give it to me. Seems like it's just been named based on somebody finding it in their collection and saying, well, it looks like a Laganosa with big leaves. Nice one to add to the collection. And if you would like to add it to your collection and you're in the European Union, it'll be in my shop at some point, you yeah. know? It'll be there. Laganosa Borneo. It's a pretty typical looking Hoya. I would say that this one looks closest to my original Hoya Laganosa that I got from a garden center in Paris in 2018. These two are very similar in appearance to me. Considering I have like 36 different Hoya Lacanosa um, clones and hybrids, these two are the most similar looking. And so I do wonder if this is the same clone as the original. I mean, there's no way to say, there's no way to tell. I don't have a DNA test, I can't tell you. But this is a very nice Hoya Lacanosa to have in the collection. Blooms all the time, I mean, they all, they all bloom all the time. That's just another reason why I love them. This next one is my favorite for a whole different reason. Look how shiny it is. This is, it's called Hoya Lacanosa Sikidian Java or Chikidian Java. I think in Indonesian, um, C is pronounced as like a ch sound. So, I don't, I don't know though, I'm not absolutely positive. Um, Chikidian Java, but that's not a place in Indonesia. Java, Indonesia, same thing. Chikidian is not a place. And so my thought on that is that maybe the name got messed up at some point after the Hoya was put into trade. You know, some people, they'll make typos or they can't read someone's handwriting or something. So maybe it's Chikidang 
or Chikanda or Chikyara. I'm probably not pronouncing any of those correctly, but I will always keep it labeled as I purchased it to avoid confusion so that nobody thinks that there's like another Hoya Lacanosa. But like, look how shiny it is though. Sorry, I'm rambling about the freaking origin, but like, it's so shiny. My cat is begging at the door. She wants to come inside. My cats would be sleeping all day, but because I have something important to accomplish, they want to go in and out, 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 in out, in and out, out, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, in from someone while I was actually looking to replace a plant that I had lost. I think it was actually called Hoya, it was Lacanosa black leaves or Croniana black leaves. And it had very dark leaves. This has dark leaves, but it is not the same clone as the one that I lost and was looking for, but it is a nice one nonetheless. EP3789, where are you? Oh, it's right here. Okay. This is a cute one that I got through a connection. I saw the post on Facebook um, from a Polish vendor in a Polish Hoya sellers group. But a lot of people in Poland will not send Hoyas outside of Poland. So. But lucky me, I have a friend who lives in France and travels frequently to Poland because she is Polish. And so she was able to nab this and she sent me a cutting. It's always good to have connections. I don't know, it's not very big, so I can't say much about it. It is starting to grow more. It's been in one of my prop boxes that I keep in my patio door window, and it's been such a gray and grim and dreary winter. It's been the, it's like been one of the worst. Do you think? That you could give me one hour of silence and not trying to test the limits of your ability to mountain climb? Do you think that you could relax for a moment? Do you think that while I'm doing something very important, that you could maybe chill the fuck out? Obligatory, wormy shaming shot. Somebody can't stop climbing on chills. I love you, but you drive me crazy. Look at her little belly. Look at her little belly. Ooh. Okay, bye. Stop making noise. APC three two nine. Again, this was a pretty big plant. It just started, I don't know, it just, it started uh, growing like vine, 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 dropping leaves. So then it just had like really long vines with no leaves and then only leaves at the end. And when a plant starts growing like that, I'm just, I don't like it. I am not a fan. So I will chop it up and restart it. Just like I did in this case. Unfortunately, this is a really highly coveted Hoya. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry to say that if you have been waiting for this to be in stock in my shop, it's probably gonna be a little while. <laughs> it's not gonna be tomorrow. I really just wanna get through this now. <laughs> I don't think I'm even over the hump. I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling delirious at this point. And I must move forward. I must finish this task that I have started. Hoya IML 0162. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's just a lacanosa. I mean, it's it's about as a tr traditional lacanosa as you can get. I didn't know what it looked like. I was doing a trade with somebody. I asked them what lacanosa they had in their collection, and they told me that they had IML0162, and I was like, I'll take it. So, it's cute. Lacanosa cow luang long leaves. As you can see, this is one that I haven't really cut very often. But yeah, it's now it's one of my bigger Hoya Lacunosas, and it's got those long, thin leaves 
that look like little blades and it has um, turtle shell sort of pattern on them. So that's nice. I mean, it's called Kowloong Long Leaves. I've seen longer, honestly. Hoya Rebecca, which I also have, but only a small cutting these days. Hoya Rebecca is a cross between Hoya Lankawi Island and Hoya Obscura. This is Lankawi Island. Now, I am not entirely convinced that Hoya Lakunoza Lankawi Island is not the same as Hoya Lakunoza Durian Parangan Waterfall. Unfortunately, I lost my Durian Parangan Waterfall in the great paraffin oil debacle. This is really cute though. It's got such little leaves with ungulate edges. So it's got these like crimped looking edges and the leaves are just so tiny and it blooms all the time. Like if I were doing a, like if I were building a dollhouse, like a miniatures situation, I would take a little cutting. Miniature Hoya. What's next? You know, I'm so sad about this one. This really is, I know I say it about like a lot of these, Poonsack is one of my favorites because it looks like Mr. Tent, EPC 329. It looks, it's got that look of the leaves with like lots of dimples and it's like kind of turtle shell like, but it, it's like the miniature version of Mr. Tent. Look how many, this thing has so many peduncles. This was one of my most prolific bloomers for sure. I was able to save some cuttings of it. This is a really light color because it got sun bleached last summer. If I have some photos though, I'll show you some photos. It's more of a darker green. This one was a nice find. This one is Lacanosa Ranong Province, Thailand. Still really small because I just acquired it a few months ago. It's really nice. These really long, thin leaves and splash and a lot of texture. I'm really looking forward to that one growing big. Snowcaps Select. I used to have a Hoya called Snowcaps, but I never felt that it was the real clone compared to photos that I had seen online. I got this one from a friend in Sweden, Hoya Maniac. And my goodness, isn't it a select Hoya? It grows so fast and it's just really gorgeous. Big leaves with these like pockets, divots, almost like you would see on Hoya Carnosa Crinkle 8 or Chelsea. Just has a lot of shape. Ooh, this was a good find too. This is Lacanosa SR2010055. Isn't that a nice Hoya? This Lacanosa is so cool looking. I think it was sold to me as a Lacunosa question mark, but in my opinion, there's no question. Like this just is absolutely with no doubt a Lacunosa. I just love how crinkly the edges are. The edges are so undulate, like lace on the edges. Really, really pretty. Oh yeah, Lacunosa, how do you like that? Is this one your favorite? Is this one your favorite? It's really hot in here. You don't understand. It's really hot. But I said I would do this and I'm gonna finish the task. But I'm sweating profusely now. It's amazing that I have like 230 Hoyas in my collection considering how many I have almost lost. <laughs> but this is Lacanosa Laos Splash. This is another highly coveted Hoya. Cool, really pretty, so splashy and it sun stresses really beautifully. I think this spring it's going to absolutely explode with growth. And this time I won't bake it on my patio. <laughs> All right, now I do have some hybrids that I would like to talk about. Hoya Sunrise CSG18024. This is a seedling that came from the Hoya Sunrise of the collection of Camilla and she doesn't, I guess it's an unknown father. There was a seed pod on her Hoya Sunrise. And so she sowed the seeds and this is one of the seeds. And then I have one of the other uh, plants from that seed pod. Isn't that so pretty? The leaf shape is just gorgeous. It's very shiny. It's growing really well for me as well. And I have a feeling that it will sun stress 
tremendously. And then I have the sibling of this one. So this this one came from the same seed pod, Sunrise CSG18021. It used to be a bigger plant, but this was one of the Hoyas that fell victim to aphids. So we ended up having to chop it all up and save it. Now it's doing fine. It blooms all the time. The difference that I see between this and this is obviously, I mean, they came from the same seed pod, but this one has little thicker, chunkier, succulent leaves compared to this one. It might be growing conditions. I grew this one in such high light and this one has been more in low light. Not low light, but like lower light than this. From this one, because this was the first one that I got, I think in February, 2022, and it arrived. And then like two weeks after it was rooting in one of my tents, I discovered that it had a seed pot on it. So it apparently had been pollinated and then Camilla took a cutting to send to me and we, neither of us noticed that a tiny seed pod had already begun to develop. So two weeks in my care and it suddenly had a seed pod on it. And I ended up with Hoya seedling from Sunrise CSG 18021. So I had a whole lot of these. Um, they're identical as far as I can tell. Uh, I mean, I had like 50, 60 of these seedlings and they were all completely identical. So I think that it is the case of a self-pollinated plant. They don't look identical right now because these have all been grown in really low light conditions. They've just been in my prop box, which gets very little light all winter long. So pretty soon I'm gonna stick one of these with this in the same conditions to see uh, how closely they resemble each other after they've been grown in the same conditions. And then the last ones that I have are uh, Hoya Rebecca, which I think everyone is familiar with. Would you like to focus on the plant? Would you like to focus on the plant? This is my Hoya Rebecca. It used to be a bigger plant. I actually had a few of these. It was just a case of having let it cook too long in the sun. So it started dropping leaves, just looked really scraggly. So I decided to chop it up and start it over because it's a fast growing Hoya. And then I have Hoya L. Hoya L is so pretty. Like I said, Hoya Rebecca is from Hoya Lacanoza Longkawi Island and Hoya Obscura. Hoya L is from a seed pod on a Hoya Rebecca plant with an unknown father. And as you can see, it just sun stresses so beautifully. It's really gorgeous. Cool. It's really lovely, Hoya. I have like a really tiny cutting of Hoya Rachel somewhere. That is the sister to Hoya Rebecca. They both came from the same seed pod under the cross of Lacanoza Longkawi Island and Obscura, but it's really tiny. It's in a prop box somewhere. It's really not worth showing, but I'm happy to, you know, if this isn't my last video again, I'm happy to show it in a future video if it, you know, it's also, I mean, there are photos of it in my shop as well, probably. All right, well, that's it, that's it. Oh my God, thank God, it's done. It's done. Oh, that took it just, super, I feel like I've been, I thought it would never end. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you had a good time. Thank you for joining me. And uh, if you have any, I mean, tell me, what, you of all of these, you have to have at least one favorite, one that sticks out to you. Don't let it be Amarillo. If you have any questions, uh, or comment, I mean, you know, you know what, if this is YouTube, you know, you know how to use it. You know how it works. You leave comments and I respond to them sometimes if they are nice. <laughs> and other ones I have to delete. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, don't subscribe because I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a dependable video maker right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll see you soon. So I had all of my um, lacanosas, every single one on this table, this foldable table, folded.